Alicia for those who are tuning in and welcome back to everybody else. If you guys like demo and reviews because you guys are a beauty junkie just like myself, then consider subscribing because I love to do demo and reviews. I love discovering new products. I like to try them out and give you my honest feedback. As you guys may or may not know, I'm 100% beauty junkie, meaning I love complexion and foundation. That is something I like because there are so many foundations out there and there's just not too many that actually caters to my needs. I have drier, humble skin. I love satin finishes. I do like matte finishes too, but it really depends if it has hydrating properties in it. I do like the sunscreen. I like the buildable coverage. And I just like that airy, fresh feeling because I don't like anything suffocating my skin. Now, today in this video, I'm actually going to be demoing something really cool. So this is a brand new foundation from Givenchy, Haunt Couture Everwear Foundation, and it claims to be a 24 hour wear. I'm so stoked. This is one of the first long wear foundation. It has buildable coverage, and we're just gonna test this out to see how this looks, feels, and smell, and even throughout the day and see how this holds up. I am actually really skeptical on full coverage foundations just because I don't like it to sit on the skin. I like to be in the skin skin finish. I don't want to feel it. I don't want to see it. So as you guys know, I have a holy grail foundation, which is the Givenchy Photo Perfection. So today I'm actually going to do a demo and review and kind of see what works best for whom and what is going on in this bottle here. Today it's going to be a little face off between these two foundations, Photo Perfection versus the Everwear Foundation. Before we jump into this video, don't forget to comment below. I love reading your comments. Go ahead and give me some suggestions on some upcoming videos you guys want me to film. All right, guys, if you guys are interested on this foundation, you want to see how this wore on my skin, you want to see which one is better for me, then please keep on watching. I know you guys noticed that I did color my hair. I lightened it a lot. So the bottom half actually is an ombre and it was a silver color. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you guys may have seen a post or two with my hair when I first did it, which was about last month. And it was like super silver and gray. The color washed off and I'm kind of on the fence if I want to tone it now or when I come back from my trip. I kind of want it for the gram and the pictures since I'm there. I actually might tone my hair. I have silver toner that I could just deposit into the hair just for my trip to look cute. Mm -hmm. You guys know that I am definitely a ride or die with Givenchy, especially with their makeup. You guys know that I love their foundation because they're water based. They have a lot of hydrating properties. It gives you second skin, SPF 20. I mean the whole nine yards. And you guys know that the photo perfection is like my ride or die like literally hands down holy grail i'll go ahead and do a quick retention on this foundation because you guys know i love this guy but i'm going to jump into this guy because we need to talk about this guy here so this foundation here is a givenchy tante couture everywhere foundation this foundation is a brand new product. This actually launches at Sephora and in stores on April 13th. Today is March 23rd, so I got my hands on this a lot early. I'm so excited to try this out. I literally have not swatched this. I haven't even smelt it. I don't know what the texture is like, and I'm gonna do everything in front of the camera with you guys today. Before I get into the demo and review, like I always say, I'm gonna read a little bit about this product on Sephora's website. Since this product has not launched yet, of course, it's not gonna be on the Sephora's website yet. However, I do have some knowledge on this foundation, so I'm going to give you the information that I learned to you guys. I want to post this video a little closer to the launch date just because if some of you guys are interested or curious to know additional information that I may have missed or you guys want to learn more of, I'll put that in the info box for you guys. I actually was going over the Saks Fifth Avenue's website because they do have that foundation already on there. However, I didn't like it as much as Sephora's website, not because I I love Sephora also because it has a lot more valuable information. On the Sephora's website, it actually tells you how many stars it rates, how many percentage people would recommend, how to use it, the ingredients. And there's also pictures that people upload of what they like about it or what they paired it with. And there's just so many additional information that I really like about Sephora's website. If I can get the information beforehand, which I'm truly going to work on, I can put some of the star ratings here and how many people would recommend this product. All right, guys, I'm going to give you a little information of this foundation before we get started with the demo and review. This foundation here is the Tante Couture family as well as these guys here. I would say that this is more of like the mother of the Tante Couture and these are the babies. 
the Givenchy Tante Couture Everwear Foundation. This value is at $52 and they offer 20 shades. I was also informed that there's going to be a 10 additional shades that's going to be launching shortly after. This foundation is going to give you a satin finish, medium to buildable coverage, it's a 24 hour wear, waterproof formulation, and it has SPF 20. As I learned about this product, it actually gives you second skin finish. So this foundation here is a watered base, just like all the other foundations that they offer. Now what's really nice about this foundation is that they claim that it's a 24 hour wear foundation that is waterproof. Now out of all the foundations, I don't think they've ever had a waterproof formulation out of the times that I've worked with them and used them, and that's about seven years. So I'm really excited Excited to see how this formulation is. So how does this become a waterproof formulation you ask? So it actually contains polymer that actually holds and binds the foundation together for more of a long wear foundation. How and why? I have no idea. I haven't tried it yet. From what I understand, it's a long wear. I mean, you're bound to sweat if you're somewhere hot, but it's not going to be melting off of your face. However, if you jump in the shower or maybe jump in the pool, it may transfer off. I'm not too sure until I actually feel the texture and see how it feels. We'll do a little water test to see how that goes. For the hydrating properties, it has glycerin and licorice extract that holds the hydration and moisture onto your skin for up to six hours. It also has geranoil, 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 geranoil oil. Yes, that comes from a rose oil that gives you another hydrating property as well as vitamin C for brightening, containing amino acids, non-comedogenic, antibacterial, and SPF 20. So this foundation sounds like it has everything in one. The reason why I love these formulation is because it actually doesn't contain any oils. Oils and foundations can be a scary subject to talk about. However, when I mention about the oils in this formulation, it's actually a small percentage. So it's not going to be harmful in a sense but it's actually benefiting you. So it actually gives you a little bit of hydrating properties. There are some people who love products that contains a little bit of oil. I mean, maybe they have a drier complexion, so they need a little bit of oils in their products. The other three foundations that I showed you are oil-free. However, they do contain hyaluronic acid, so it actually balances with my skin. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about my holy grail right here, guys. This is my absolute hands down favorite foundation. Why? It's a watered base. There's no oils, no silicone, no alcohol. It has hyaluronic acid. It gives you a satin finish, buildable, and SPF 20. Now, everyone's probably like, oh my God, why do you need SPF? Well, a few reasons. One, it's all in one product. Two, it does not give me a flashback. A lot of times you get that flashback finish, maybe what you wear before the foundation. Maybe you put extra sunscreen that day, or maybe you put a lot of illuminating products or the foundation may be a little too light. I haven't got any flashbacks with this. Even if I use brightening properties, it actually is the best thing on earth. It literally gives you second skin finish. It's so soft and hence the name Photo Perfection. It's going to give you like an airbrush feel kind of texture in life and in pictures, whether you're taking pictures or not. I talk about this foundation a lot. You guys know I love this. Today, we're gonna test out the Everwear foundation and see how it feels, if it's similar, if I like it or not. All right, so I put on my bunny ears. Let's go ahead and get my hair out of my face. Before we get started, as always, I'm gonna get a little close up of how my face looks like without any makeup. Oh, I forgot to mention one important thing. I am actually really happy that this Lux line offers 20 shades. A lot of Lux lines doesn't really offer a lot of shades or the foundations is too similar. The first 10 and then the second half just has like a big jump. So I'm actually really excited what they currently offer now and I'm so excited to see the deeper complexions. Now the foundation that I think would be my shade out of these four would be this here. This shade is Y215. They actually offer a all yellow line and a all pink line. So their wide shades begins at Y100, 110, 115. Their pink line starts with P100, 110, 115, and so and so. Now, one may ask, why don't they have a neutral line? I believe if you look at the shade ranges of the Ys and the Ps, in between the shades may have some foundations that may have some pink and yellow undertones under one shade. So that's where the neutral probably lies in between. I don't think they wanted to have like a Y, an N, and a P, which probably would be best. However, I think you can find your neutral shades under the Ys or the pink shades. Again, I'm hoping for the best that it suits many, many complexions. This is how the bottle looks like. It's a traditional one ounce. It's a tall and skinny bottle. It has a silver lid. It has like a little star kind of shape here. It's a pretty jar. It actually is a very similar package to their Matissime Velvet. Now this is a totally different formulation. This is a very thin 
even kind of texture so it's a lot different than here it's literally black and white i just wanted to show you how similar the package is but again this is a totally different one if you guys want me to do a demo and review on this guy please comment below and like this video so this here is called the givenchy everwear foundation in shade y215 the bottle says 24 hour wear satin finish full coverage and comfort with spf 20. this is how the top looks like really pretty all right so let's just open this up it's just like a regular traditional pump i love pump so let's go ahead and squeeze a little bit. Ooh, it looks a little thick. So that's how it looks like. Just gonna do one swipe. You guys know that my hands are a lot lighter than my face, so it may look pretty warm on my hand. So far, it has like a weird tackiness, I wanna say. It absorbs into the squin. Squin. It absorbs into the skin pretty quick. Look at it yet. I just want to feel this. So it does have a powdery finish. The product already absorbed into my hand. I'm just like literally feeling it. It does have a velvety powdery finish, so it seems like it sets itself. It doesn't feel heavy on my hand. So this is how it looks like. This is the color. And that's my hand. It has a nice little reflective sheen, but not glittery, just a sheen. Hmm. I do smell the rose oil. It, it does have a little bit of a stronger scent, but it's not that. Okay. I do have a little texture on my hand, so you can see a little bit, but not really. It looks a little dry-ish. And again, maybe my hands are dry. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch the photo perfection here and see if there's a texture difference. That like seemed a lot waterier. Yes, it moves a lot smoother. And again, we're talking about two different textures, so I'm not hating on it yet. It's just I'm familiar and used to this formulation. So it's just something that I like and it's a totally different formulation. This already absorbed into my skin so fast and I can already tell this absorbed into my skin a lot smoother. Whereas this, you can see a little bit of texture. To be honest, I'm a little scared. Just because you guys know, I like a full coverage. I like a matte finish. It's just my skin can't really handle it. Although I may say that you can use hydrating properties, hydrating primers in addition to the foundation to balance it out. Sometimes if the formulation is too heavy, it just sits on the skin rather than in the skin. So I literally just moisturize my face. I don't have any primer on. I have a little scab here that's a little bit opened and and I, you know, I'm just so crazy and clumsy. I was changing into PJs yesterday and I kind of went like this really fast and somehow I just like jabbed my thumb into my face. Like who does that? I'm hoping this will cover it. Again, texture will show, but color can be corrected. So it's been about maybe two minutes and I can already tell that the photo perfection is literally so smooth. And this side, you can see a little texture. It gives a powdery finish as if I actually powdered my face. And you guys know I don't powder my face because when I wear this foundation, it's like all day wear. So Givenchy's beauty tip with their foundations is always apply on the foundation with your fingers as an applicator, as long as they're clean, or you can use their blender, which is pretty cool, or you could use a buffing brush. For this demonstration, I'm gonna use half of the face with their blender as they actually recommend, and the other half with my fingers. So I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands and dampen the sponge, I'll be right back. What I like about this sponge is that you can actually use this wet or dry because it's so soft. The center of this is big enough for you to hold so you don't contaminate the sponge with your dirty hands. You can flip it over and use this side to contour. The tips are actually flat so if you have a blemish, which I'm going to try right there, I'm just going to go boop. I'm just going to put this on the same part that I use this. So I'm going to use my hand as a palette and I'm just going to put one full pump here. I'm going to take a little bit of this foundation as you see. I'm going to start buffing it in this area. I feel like using a sponge is nice because it actually makes your skin a little bit more sheer in a sense. I'm gonna grab a little bit more. And focus on the red parts, which is around my nose and under my eyes. The sponge is really nice because it really just fits the whole side of your face. Just focusing it under the eyes a little bit more. All right guys, so this part here, just on my cheeks, just right here, I have a lot of pores. You guys may not see it, or maybe you guys do and don't say nothing, but I have a lot. So I don't like packing too much in that area because I feel like 
enhances it. Unless if I put a lot of primer, which I don't really like to put too much primer on, unless if I really needed that smooth application if I'm going somewhere or some event or something. Whatever is left on my hand in sponge, I'm just gonna press it into the forehead because I don't need too much there, but we'll see. So this side is one application with their blender. This color actually matches me, guys. I was a little afraid I had to mix a little bit of the darker shade. Actually matches pretty good. So under my eyes, it literally is opaque enough to neutralize the purples. As you see on this side, I have a lot of discoloration going on. The center of the face is very nice. It has settled in my skin already, so it actually feels really powdery. I'm a little concerned about texture around here. So on this side, we're gonna go ahead and apply it on with just my fingers. And I'm gonna use this as a palette. Ooh, that's a lot of product. So I basically just used these three fingers and I was just doing little stippling actions and kind of patting motions very gently. And it actually is not too bad. The coverage of it is pretty even. I didn't focus too much under the eyes, but I do have a little product left that I'm going to use. Oh, okay. Maybe a little too much. I'm going to take the smaller portion that I dabbed off for my Oops. forehead. Yeah, too much. And now I'm just going to use my fingers to pat and a little bit down my nose. Make sure I don't have a line of demarcation. So this video will be a little bit different as it has already been since I'm not reading off of the Sephora's website. <laughs> I'm gonna do an update throughout the day and just see how this wears. So far, I applied on an even amount on my face. I just used two applications on each sides of my face. Under the eyes, it's really nice and covered. I'm gonna do a little close up to show you how this looks like. Turning off my lights, cause I want you guys to see that there is no line of demarcation. It's a pretty good color match for the four shades that I have. I'm gonna get a little close up so you can see See if you can detect any texture. So far, I think the coverage is not too bad. It doesn't feel heavy on my skin. The only thing I kind of worry about is a little bit of dryness around here. I don't know if it's because I, I packed on a little bit more foundation than I normally do around here, or maybe it's just dry. I did a nose strip the other day, so I don't know. It could be that. My pores are definitely not enhanced at all. I don't know if it's the oil that's binding with the product with the hydrating properties that gave it that nice smooth finish. Under the eyes, I would say it's a little bit taking a while to settle in. I'm not too sure, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of my complexion. I don't know about you guys, but from what I can see here, my skin just looks on point. Like it looks so filter looking without the filter. So this, wow. It's still very smooth and airy. The one concern I have of these full cover foundations is that my laugh lines or my makeup will just start to separate. Right now is 9.57, so I actually had my makeup on since 8.30 today. So throughout my day, I'll give you a few updates. I'll take some pictures. I'm not going to powder or anything throughout the day. I'm just gonna go as is. I have errands to do, I have work to do. When I come back home tonight, I'll give you my 100% feedback, final thoughts, what I liked about this, what I disliked at the end of the day. So let's just do a quick picture test right now. So now I'm going to give you the full view at 957 of how my makeup currently looks like. Before I let you guys go, I just want to let you know that I actually do like the application with the sponge a little bit better on this side versus this side with just my fingertips. Okay, so here's a quick update in the sunlight. My living room does have the best lighting because the sun is like shooting here. Is it better here? All right. Oh, it is so bright. Well, actually, if it's so bright, I want you to see if you see any texture. You probably just see a lot of my highlight. So far, so good. Any separations? No. So I'm over here at Stanford Mall. I'm outdoors. Just wanted to give you a quick update on the foundation. There is a lot of pollen all over the floor. I'm so glad I took my allergy pills today because I don't want to be suffering. Let's see if I can get a better shot here. Just nothing really separated yet. Laugh lines are actually okay under the eyes. So right now it's 12 o'clock. I'll come back for another update. You can see I'm driving home now. Later parts in the afternoon, it started like raining at 
it was really weird. So there was no point to run outside by the time I wanted to. And to give you an update as I'm driving now, again, with the most unflattering view at the moment to see like my 10 chins. As soon as I stop, I'm gonna give you another quick look at my skin before I go back indoors. All right, guys, this is my final update out in the sunlight. I guess you wanna say this is how my makeup looks like not too bad it did feel like it wore off a little bit I'm not too sure all right guys i'm back home it's literally almost eight o'clock so i've been wearing this foundation on my face all day again i didn't touch it up i didn't blot it i have a little bit of redness here that's separated i don't know if it's because i was messing with it today but everything else seems to look the same as if i had it on earlier today my highlight didn't separate or move so what i'm going to do is an overall view first so forgive me when i get closer later if you see any eyeliner or gunk around on my face and eye boogers actually really really surprised how this foundation wore on my skin as I felt the product it was a little thick and it had some scaly parts on my hand which means texture versus the photo perfection that was a lot smoother again on this side I used the blender on this side I used my fingers as application pretty even not one side has more or less around my nose equal part is already coming off again I have really bad allergies I kind of rub my nose or blow it time to time but it wasn't too bad again my freckles are still peeking through which I like which is totally fine the forehead it doesn't seem like it's separated or felt like it caked up I do like how I doubled up this product for a concealer it did help however in here it's a little dark I don't know if it's from my eyeliner that kind of drooped down throughout the day which actually it is yes it could use a little bit more concealer just the foundation as a overall one pump on each side was actually pretty good for this application I didn't put any primer I literally wanted to see how the application wore on my skin it's not as drying because it does have oils to help balance the skin now would you say I'll still wear this foundation or still stick to this I know you guys know my answer I'm definitely still gonna use this as my everyday my go-to however if I were to go somewhere it's a little bit humid or if I know I needed something for a long wear or if I'm taking pictures or just needing more of a full buildable coverage then I probably would use this would I suggest this or recommend this to people yes why not this is a great coverage it has a great formulation it has a lot of skincare benefits this foundation I would definitely recommend as well it's still a great formulation it really depends on your preference overall I I do like this foundation if you guys are interested I'll go ahead and put everything in the info box for you guys that you can always go to your local Sephora's and get a sample of this if you guys enjoy this demo and review please give this a big thumbs up and also if you like how I gave you updates throughout the day I will try to do that more often if you guys like it so I hope you guys enjoyed this demo and review this is not sponsored I was not paid for this this is just my 100% honest feedback on this product and I just want to give you guys my opinion so if you guys are looking for that type of foundation and you guys want more information that is why i'm here <laughs> all right guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video